In this video, I'm going to be proving this identity that you see right here that I've circled, which says that 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth minus 1 eleventh forever, where you alternate between adding and subtracting, is exactly equal to pi divided by 4. So how are we going to prove this? Well, first, we are going to use the geometric series identity 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, etc. is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x. Next, we are going to integrate on both sides. We can do this term-wise on the left-hand side, so we get that the first term becomes x, the second term becomes x squared divided by 2, the third term becomes x cubed over 3, the fourth term becomes x to the fourth over 4, etc. The right-hand side is just a basic calculus problem, and it's relatively easy to see that it is equal to negative natural log of 1 minus x. However, we must account for the fact that when you integrate, there may be a constant involved. Let's call this constant c. To figure out what c is equal to, we set x equal to 0. We see that the left-hand side is equal to 0, and the first term of the right-hand side is also equal to 0. So therefore, c must be equal to 0 for our equation to be true. So we just have x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fourth over 4, etc. is equal to negative natural log of 1 minus x. What would happen if we switched the sign of x? We see that on the left-hand side, all the terms with an odd power of x in them would become negative because a negative number to an odd power is negative. However, all the terms with an even power of x would stay the same because a negative number to an even power is a positive number. So the sign of those terms will not change. On the right-hand side, the only thing that changes is we go from negative natural log of 1 minus x to negative natural log of 1 plus x. So we get the equation negative x plus x squared over 2 minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fourth over 4, etc. is equal to negative the natural log of 1 plus x. By multiplying both sides by negative 1, we get that x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3, etc. is equal to the natural log of 1 plus x. Note that all the even powers are now negative but all the odd powers are now positive because we switched all of the signs of the terms. Now let's consider the natural log of 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x. We can break it into two separate pieces using the properties of logarithms and then plug in our previous formulas like this and like this. And we note that all of the even terms cancel because there is one positive and one negative of them. But all of the odd terms do not cancel because they are both positive. So we get 2x plus 2x cubed over 3 plus 2x to the fifth over 5, etc., including only the odd powers of x. We can divide both sides of the equation by 2 to get that the natural log of 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x over 2 is equal to x plus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5 plus x to the seventh over 7, etc., including only the odd powers of x. Now, what is the natural log of 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i divided by 2 equal to? Well, on one hand, we can use our formula with x equal to i to get that it is equal to i plus i cubed over 3 plus i to the fifth over 5 plus i to the seventh over 7, etc. We can factor out an i from our equation to get i times 1 plus i squared over 3 plus i to the fourth over 5 plus i to the sixth over 7, etc. Now we realize that the first term will be positive. The second term will be negative because i squared is equal to negative 1. The third term will be positive because i to the fourth is equal to 1. The fourth term will be negative because i to the sixth is negative 1, and we realize it will alternate between being positive and negative. So we get that it is equal to i times 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh, etc. Now on the other hand, we can calculate this directly. Note that 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i is just equal to i. So this is just equivalent to the natural log of i divided by 2. Now, using Euler's formula, which is e to the i theta is equal to cosine theta plus i times sine theta, and plugging in the value pi divided by 2 for theta, we see that e to the power of i times pi divided by 2 is equal to cosine of pi divided by 2 plus i times sine of pi divided by 2. 
this is clearly equal to i. So therefore, e to the power of i times pi over 2 is equal to i. So by the definition of the natural log, the natural log of i is equal to i times pi divided by 2. So we can substitute this value into our equation to get that the natural log of i divided by 2 is equal to i times pi divided by 2 divided by 2, which is clearly just i times pi divided by 4. So on one hand, we know that the natural log of 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i over 2 is equal to i times pi divided by 4. But on the other hand, up here, we figured out that it was equal to i times 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh, etc. So therefore, i times 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh forever is equal to i times pi divided by 4. So finally, we divide by i on both sides to get that 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth minus 1 eleventh, etc. forever is exactly equal to pi divided by 4, which was our original goal. Thank you for watching.